Having secret code words is a great way to get your friends to chuckle when you can't say something rude in a crowd, and they're great for joking around in grade school. But secret codes are actually used all the time in public, and you probably didn't realize it. Have you ever been called a treasured guest at Disneyland? Hopefully not, because it isn't the compliment it sounds like. The delightful label is actually how Disneyland workers refer to customers who are unpleasant and difficult. Bet you never knew Mickey could be so sneaky, huh? Just goes to show you never know what kind of face he's making behind that mask. Some people have noticed this euphemism in action, but it's mainly employed for diplomatic purposes rather than gossip. Disneyland workers are forbidden from using insulting language due to all the kids around, so calling the jerks treasured guests is a nice way to warn co-workers. Don't mind us, we're with the guide. We're with Cody. What are you apologizing for? You VIP boy, own this! This isn't the only code word you'll hear at the world's most colorful, magical playground either. For example, people who urinate in the swimming pool activate a code Winnie because you have to have a sense of humor about these things. Broken rides are code 101s and fixed rides are code 102s. And then there's also the so-called white powder alert. It's not about cocaine, but it's even sadder. It refers to when people attempt to spread a loved one's ashes on the park grounds, which is illegal without Disneyland's permission. And honestly, when Grandpa Robbie said he wanted his ashes sprinkled from the top of the Matterhorn, he probably meant the real one in the Swiss Alps, not the roller coaster imitation in Anaheim. For a parent, there are very few things scarier than the threat of child abduction, and that's why many big chain stores employ something called Code Adam. This is activated when a parent reports that their kid has gone missing, at which point associates will move to monitor the building's exits, watching carefully for any young ones matching the lost child's description and any strange adults that might be with them. The procedure was first adopted by Walmart in 1994, over a decade after a six-year-old boy named Adam Walsh was abducted at a Sears. While the exact circumstances surrounding the boy's abduction have never been fully explained, it seems likely that the adult lured him to the parking lot by promising candy and toys. 16 days later, according to Time, part of Adam's remains were found in a canal off the side of the Florida Turnpike. The alleged murderer, a serial killer named Otis Toole, confessed to the murder and recanted his confession before dying in 1996. Adam's father, John Walsh, became a crusader for missing children. He co-founded the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, and most famously spent years hosting America's Most Wanted. A lot of crazy stuff goes down in hospitals. Sure, the antics you see on medical TV shows like Grey's Anatomy are pretty divorced from reality, but ask any nurse how their day was and you'll hear a whole cocktail of dramas, near catastrophes, and disputes. Because emergencies aren't exactly uncommon in a place with a whole unit called the emergency room, medical staff use all kinds of jargon to quickly convey information without alarming the patients, and color codes are the standard. For example, it's generally understood that code blue refers to cardiac arrest. While heart attacks hopefully aren't a daily part of your home life, these instances are frequent enough in healthcare settings that many facilities employ rapid response teams called blue code teams. Of course, the precise meaning of code blue can vary depending on region or hospital. For example, the Hospital Association of Southern California simply lists it as adult medical emergency. Not all emergency codes are used so frequently, but they're usually fairly intuitive. Code red, for instance, refers to a possible fire in the building. Code pink refers to an infant being abducted. Code silver means a potentially hostile person is armed with a weapon. You get the idea. Face it, if there's one thing that tech-savvy geeks love to do, it's make fun of people who don't know how to use their computers properly. What is it? This, Jen, is the internet. That may sound mean, but honestly, just imagine spending three hours Skyping with a furious screaming relative about how their computer won't turn on anymore and hasn't turned on for weeks, only to find out that it had been unplugged from the wall the whole time. When you work in tech support, a sense of humor will become your lifeblood. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> you sure? Yeah. When it comes time to diagnose customer problems that have nothing to do with their stupid computers, tech workers will often communicate in codes that sound real but are actually about the Luddite caller. Try PEBCAC, an acronym standing for Problem Exists Between Keyboard and Chair. Ouch. There's also code 18, which means the problem is 18 inches from the screen. Bigger ouch. Then there's EEOC for Equipment Exceeds Operator Capabilities, and the meanest code of all is ID10T, which means, well, once you see it, you understand. Nobody enjoys flying, and that's because there's literally no part of the entire process that is the least bit enjoyable. 
I'm sorry, I'm having a really hard time processing information right now. We took sleeping pills. Just make your way over to gate 32. Okay. It's a pain from the very beginning, especially the part where you have to go through security. Between waiting in line, taking off your shoes, putting your laptop in a bin, and dealing with the increasingly draconian baggage policies of airlines, it's no fun. One thing that certainly makes it even worse, though, is when a TSA officer leaps in front of you and yells, Code Bravo, freeze! What's the deal? Code Bravo signals a general security issue at the airport and can be employed by officials as a way to scare travelers to make it easier to figure out who the troublesome party is. Yes, really. Basically, they want to shut down a checkpoint quickly and efficiently by making everybody, um, freeze. Fair enough. According to the New York Times, though, this is often done during off-peak hours once or twice annually as a simple training exercise, so TSA officers will be ready to roll when or if a real threat emerges. Technically, if this happens to you, you're not legally required to do your best Mr. Freeze impression, though you might get some mean looks if you don't stand still. But hey, you're the one who bought the plane ticket and are spending 20 bucks on a dollar menu hamburger at the airport, right? Most of these codes are useful security measures. This code, on the other hand, is a horrifying reminder that white supremacists are still a danger to the world today. While the numbers 14 and 88 might look innocuous enough, they're actually used as a dog whistle for neo-Nazis. According to the Anti-Defamation League, the 14 refers to the so-called 14 words slogan first written by white supremacy terrorist David Lane to summarize his disturbing, racist worldview. The 88 is based on H being the eighth letter of the alphabet, so 88 is supposed to stand for Heil Hitler. These numbers, sometimes used apart, but usually together, signify a person's racist, white supremacist viewpoints. Variations of 1488 have been stealthily employed in tattoos, signs, and are often hidden within a person's seemingly normal email address or social media handle, like 14 John Doe 88. Once you know the code, it's terrifying to find it in unexpected places. For instance, the Fair Network reported that certain Russian football fans with neo-Nazi views came to a 2013 game wearing 1488 emblazoned on their t-shirts. Another example is the Pittsburgh synagogue shooter who featured 1488 on his social media cover photo. These things are subtle, so keep an eye out. When you're hitching a ride on the London Underground, you might occasionally hear staff talking about a man named Inspector Sands, particularly if they're making an announcement that he's needed in a certain room. While this name brings to mind the image of a distinguished, monocled fellow who could compete for the right to replace any of the characters in Clue, Inspector Sands is actually just a code word so staff members can inform each other of a fire situation without alerting the public. It's not the same as yelling fire in a crowded theater, but it turns out that even casual conversations about potential small fires can cause mass panics. Hence, Sands to the rescue. When the situation is diffused, don't be surprised to hear an announcement that Inspector Sands has left the building. The Independent confirmed that there are plenty of other code words used on the tube, but sadly, most of them use numbers instead of fun names and are mainly just cleaning directions for the poor folks who have to mop up the grotesque messes found just about anywhere humans frequent. So when a janitor hears code 1, they know they'll be wiping up blood, while code 3 could refer to vomit, and so on. That's strangely both disgusting and boring. As tedious as it sounds, new scientific advances are often made by taking a deep, hard look at somebody else's published scientific results. Whether you're debunking an old conclusion, proving it right, or building upon it, access to that published research can be key. Unfortunately, not every scientist has the dough to purchase the latest studies on a particular subject, especially if they don't have a wealthy organization funding them. What's a researcher to do? Well, it's the 21st century, so the answer is go on social media, post a link to the paper you need, and write, I can has PDF. And then some other scientist who does have access will make a copy and send it over, and the request will be deleted. Sounds goofy, but it works. According to the BBC, the tag was invented by cognitive scientist Andrea Koshevsky based on the popular I can has cheeseburger meme that often accompanied funny cat photos in the early years of the internet. Naturally, the publishers who hold the rights to these academic papers are pretty unhappy about this science piracy and argue that such paper swapping is illegal, but Koshevsky believes that continuing the trend will change the way research papers are published, ideally resulting in a more open access future. It's a lot faster than it used to be. Unless you're a character in a slapstick comedy, falling off the side of a cruise ship is a surefire way to ruin a family vacation. This awful situation happens, though, so the various cruise ship companies out there have all developed code words for the crew to use whenever a passenger falls off the side. 
On Royal Caribbean cruise ships, the term code OSCAR is employed three times in quick succession, followed by a location. That means you'd be likely to hear something like, Code Oscar, Code Oscar, Code Oscar off the starboard hull, announced over the ship's radio system so all the crew can get involved in the rescue effort. Getting the word out quickly and without all the non-overboard passengers freaking out also makes sure the vessel slows down and gives time for the crew to grab their gear. Alternately, many other ships use a different signal that someone's gone over the side. For some, it's three blasts on the ship's whistle, which is Morse code for the letter O followed by a vertical flare. Other ships, according to the Telegraph, employ the code word Mr. Mob for Man Overboard. Now you're in the know. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.